Hey, this is Jody with another weekly video. This week's video is a bit of a hot button topic. It's uh, sharpening tungsten electrodes. There's a lot of opinions out there on that. Basically, there is best practice up here of using a diamond wheel of a certain grit that, that um, is dedicated to only ever sharpening tungsten electrodes. And then there's everything else. There's a lot of ways to do it. I've seen it done a lot of ways, a lot of pretty crude ways. And I've seen a lot of, well, I've seen a lot of x-ray welds made with improperly sharpened electrodes. So just, just contributing to the conversation today, let's get on with it. All right, there are a lot of benefits to having a dedicated tungsten grinder, like a handheld one like this. You can cut. If you get a blob of metal on it, you can cut it off really easily with the diamond wheel. You can put a flat spot on the end. You can put a consistent taper with the scratches all running like they ought to be. And the taper is consistent every single time. And you eliminate variables. You can also trap the dust. Like this one's got a little capsule. Traps the tungsten dust. That's, that's definitely a benefit. But I don't have one. And I just can't make myself buy one. Because every time I think about spending the $300 or more, dollars, even up to $800, I think about what else I can buy with that. And I wind up not getting one. So here's some other options. Here's one that not a lot of people aren't necessarily familiar with. It's called ChemSharp. It's a powdered uh, chemical that you dip the electrode in after getting the tip of it red hot. And a couple ways to get it red hot. Really, the best way is probably just with a little handheld propane torch. You don't have to ground out your machine like this, but you can you can just ground it out, get it hot, and dip it in and out, in and out, in and out, and uh, it will put a taper on there as long and sharp as you want. It's just messy. It stinks. I am pretty sure breathing that junk is, is not good for you. Uh, it really stinks. So keep if you if you use this, either you know keep your face out of that stuff. Don't breathe it. Can't be good for you. And also, it's good to have a little piece of Scotch Brite around and get that mess off of there. It's always got residue on it. But it works. It's pretty cheap. It's very portable. And it, again, it, it works. I just don't really care for it because of the fumes. Another another non-standard method is that's used a lot on construction jobs by boiler makers and pipe fitters is using a cutting torch. Now, the first time I uh, heard about this, I was working a paper mill job, and the foreman said, hey, you ever sharpen electrodes with a cutting torch? And I thought, okay, here we go. Left-handed pipe wrench joke coming, or sky hook, or bucket of weld tax. But sure enough, it, it works. It is not the best way to sharpen electrodes. Certainly, if you're at home, it's not an economical way using all that gas when you could sharpen them on a, on a grinder or using that chem sharp. But you get it red hot, you hit the lever, and, uh, and go up and down, and it erodes basically it just uh, oxidizes a layer off of that thing gradually and it taper it on down and you can get a you can get a really decent point just like you can with the chem sharp kind of now here's one uh, on the left side here you can see it's a long taper but it's also black and oxidized and uh, if, you, if you do this you kinda need to light up on a piece of scrap and let that stuff outgas now this is a rough way to do it just using a regular grinding rock on a four and a half inch grinder chucking the uh, electrode up in a little cordless drill. You know, most people have a grinder and a cordless drill, and it works. It's just a little rough, but I do it all the time, to be honest with you. Uh, for a lot of jobs, it's okay. Of course, there is the old method here. Mom, he's grinding the tungsten sideways again. Mom! Oh, well, never mind. I picked this up at Home Depot for, I think, on sale for 30 bucks six inch bench grinder I mean this is this for most people unless you're working in the uh, nuclear industry semiconductor industry pharmaceutical piping things of that nature for most for most jobs this is this will be just fine there is a risk of embedding aluminum oxide on the tip but it's been done this this method has been used for so many years using aluminum oxide wheels lots of good welds have been made this way another method is uh, just a belt sander of all kinds this this is one type of belt sander that uh, would work and that belt has been used for other stuff but unless you are working on a really critical application you're probably not going to notice any difference to be honest with you now this will put a nice this will put a nice taper on there it's about a hundred grit to 120 grit belt and I can put as long a taper or as blunt a taper as I want. It's just they're not, they're not going to be 100% consistent like they would with an electrode grinder. But again, it works.
use diamond wheels is this little four piece set from Harbor Freight. It's got a quarter inch uh, shank uh, arbor on it and I just chucked it up in a, uh, a straight grinder and it's not the safest, not nearly as safe as, as an electrode grinder because it's not encapsulated, doesn't trap the dust and doesn't have a guard on it and everything. But this little wheel works really well for cutting electrodes as well as putting a pretty quick uh, taper on them. Just hold this with one hand and then the drill with the other and again it's a little bit cumbersome so it's not my favorite way but it does put a really a really good point on an electrode and it does it really quickly and you can get the scratches running pretty pretty uh, favorably. So that's just, just an option, like the cheapest way to go diamond wheel. Another way that I've read about on forums that I, that I uh, tried here, don't really recommend it, is just a, a diamond cutting wheel like this on a four and a half inch grinder. And you can actually, I've seen actually on forums where uh, guys drill holes in the, uh, in the guard and then poke the electrode through there to kind of support it. But I could just uh, kind of prop it against the guard like this. And the the, uh, the sparks, while not trapping the dust, at least it, it uh, kind of directs them and don't just go everywhere. And that actually didn't work too bad. It put a really quick point on one, just really rough scratches. The, the point on the right there is the point that was done using that particular diamond wheel. And you can see that the scratches are pretty rough as opposed to the one on the left done on the belt sander, which about with about a 100 grit belt. And, and what I'm going to do with this electrode is I'm going to do two different applications. The one on the left with the nice needle point which if I was welding on something very thick or at high amperage I might flatten off but I'm not I'm gonna actually light up on uh, some razor blade uh, box cutter stuff with this 332nd electrode this is 332nd 2.4 millimeter and the point here is when would you when would you use a long taper sharp one like that versus a less uh, sharpened one a blunt one like this and what would be a good application for each so that's what we're about to do Again, this is the 100 grit tapered back pretty far. I'm leaving it at a needle point because I'm going to put a little tack on the end of the box cutters here. And just getting a, you can see lighting up, it's a fairly stable arc, but then when it hit the thin stuff, it kind of wanted to favorably move in that position. But the point is here, you don't always have the right size electrode in your box. You know, this, this, these box cutter blades, actually the right size electrode would probably be an 040, a 40,000, so one millimeter electrode. 20 amps is what I'm using here um, and you can see it's not the arc is not wandering everywhere it didn't wander everywhere even to get a tack on the end and it's a 332nd electrode now there are guys that'll use a 1 8 electrode for almost everything they'll just sharpen it uh, a lot a lot sharper for, for light amperage thin stuff like this and uh, that's what's in their box and that's what they use it's not the best practice, not the best thing to do, but it, it works in a pinch. So here's another application. This is just a bead on a big thick chunk of metal that's not cleaned very well. And you can see the rough rough scratches that aren't running perfectly longitudinally. But at 135 amps, you're not going to get much arc wandering uh, no matter how you put the scratches. Now don't get me wrong, I am all for best practices and doing things the correct way because you don't have to wonder when things go wrong if, if that was contributing to it. But I also live in the real world and I've seen it done a lot of ways. Well, I hope this video gave you some things to think about, maybe gave you some new ideas on, on sharpening electrodes. Uh, there's also a lot more information on, on topics like this over at the forum at forum.weldingtipsandtricks.com. It's a great place to go for welding information. We'll see you next week.